Okay, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the Alpine pom-pom hat. And I'm using um, Red Heart Comfort yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook. Okay, so you're gonna start by making your loop. You're just gonna wrap the yarn around your finger and drape it over. Take a little bit of this bottom piece up and that top piece of yarn, just push it partially through and then secure it onto your hook. And we're gonna start with a chain. So if you're making this pattern, um, we'll give you the stitch count for either a uh, toddler size or a child size. I'm gonna be working on a child size. If you need other sizing, you can work from measurement rather than stitch count. And you can find um, a link to my size chart in the description below. Okay, so if you're working on a toddler size, you're gonna chain 51. If you're working on a child size, you're gonna chain 57. For any other size, have a look at the size chart and you're going to make your starting chain three inches shorter than the head circumference size that you need for the hat. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our chain. You're gonna yarn over your hook and just pull it right through the loop. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over and pull it through. So go ahead and keep on working your chain until you've gotten to the total length that you need. Um, I'm gonna be working on a child size, so I'm gonna go to chain 57. And if you're working on toddler, you're gonna do 51. Um, so go ahead and finish your chain and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished your chain, we're gonna move on to the next step here. So we're gonna work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's your first chain. We're gonna go into that second one there. You're just gonna push your hook through, yarn over, pull up a loop. You've now got two loops on your hook. You're just gonna yarn over and pull right through both. So let's do that again together. Push your hook through, yarn over, pull up a loop. Push your, sorry, yarn over your hook and pull through both loops. So you're just gonna go ahead and keep on working your single crochets in every single chain all the way down until you get to the end and then come back. So now that you've gotten to the end, you're gonna chain two and turn your work. Okay, so now moving on to our next row, we're gonna work a double crochet in every single stitch all the way down the row. So I'll show you how to do a double crochet for those of you who are not familiar with this stitch. You're gonna yarn over your hook and push it right through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you've now got three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two. Okay, so I'll do it again for you one more time. Yarn over your hook, push it through that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and continue working those double crochets in every stitch all the way down and then come back. Okay, so now that you've reached the end of that row, you're gonna chain one and turn your work. So now, going down this next row, we're gonna do a single crochet in every single stitch again. So you're just gonna go ahead and work one single crochet in every single stitch all the way down the row and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished that third row there, you're going to chain two and turn your work. So I'm gonna point out one thing really quickly while it's in my mind. At the end of every row that you've worked single crochets, cause we're gonna now go into a two row alternating pattern, a two row repeat, okay? It's gonna consist of double crochets and single crochets. So every single crochet row that you complete, before you start the next one, you're gonna chain two because the following row will be double crochets. At the end of every double crochet row, um, or alpine stitch row, because now going forward, that's what we're doing, but we will be using double crochets for our alpine stitch. So every time you end one of those double crochet rows, you will chain one before you begin the next row because the next row will be single crochets, okay? Just a little um, something to keep in mind before we move on here. So let's go ahead and start with our alpine stitch. So we're gonna yarn over our hook 
And instead of working within the row that we just completed, we're going to go down to the row before that, to these double crochets. So this first one here, this post, we're going to do a front post double crochet. So you're going to yarn over your hook, and instead of going into any stitch, you're going to go in between here, okay, you're going to go to the right hand side of your post, push your hook around behind it and out the other side. So basically what you're doing is bringing that post to the front of your work, front post double crochet, okay? You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop by pulling it back behind that stitch and you're going to complete your double crochet the same way as usual. Okay, and that's your front post double crochet. Now you're going to see a stitch back here that we're going to ignore because, and I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this as well before, your stitch count. So whatever your starting chain was, and I, I do apologize, I should have mentioned this after the very first row, whatever your starting chain was, your stitch count, because we started working in the second chain from our hook, your stitch count should be one chain less than what your starting chain was. Okay, so my work, for example, I started with a uh, 57 chain because I'm working on a child size. So I now have a stitch count of 56. Okay, we want to maintain our stitch count. And this is my purpose for pointing this out right now. So you're going to see a stitch back here that's going to get ignored. It's going to get skipped over because we worked in that stitches post. So technically, this if we were working in our stitches, this stitch would have been in here, but instead it's around the post. So to make sure we're not picking up any extra stitches here, we're not doing anything with that one. We're going to move over here to the next stitch, and we're going to work a normal double crochet right in that stitch. Okay? Now, this stitch belongs to this post, so again, to make sure that we're not picking up any extra stitches, we're skipping this we're gonna go do a front post double crochet over here. Okay, and you can see the stitch that, that, that this post belongs to, which we're gonna do nothing with it. We're gonna go and do a regular double crochet in this one. Okay, skip that post, go over here, front post double crochet, and you're gonna go ahead and continue on all the way down this row, doing alternating between front post double crochets and regular double crochets, all the way down the row until you get to the end and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished that first Alpine stitch row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now we're gonna go in every single stitch all the way down. We're gonna work a single crochet, just a regular single crochet in every single stitch all the way down. The reason for this is because obviously the back of our work here, it looks a little different. You will find um, some other patterns where I use this stitch. And if I'm working in the round, I really don't even bother with this um, single crochet row in one of my hat um, patterns I've got where I use this stitch. Um, a different hat pattern, obviously we're working on a hat right now, <laughs> but there's a, a slouchy hat where I, I use this stitch and um, um, I don't do this single crochet. I'm doing this because the way that we are doing, we're not working in the round right now. We're turning our work, we're going back and forth. So um, it's really just a matter of preference, I guess. I don't know, um, because you could do this anyway, um, regardless. And I mean, this is how the Alpine stitch is done. Um, but anyway, the, the whole point is so that it keeps the pattern consistent um, on one side, obviously. Otherwise it would be looking it wouldn't have the look it does because the back obviously looks much different than the front, right? So just keep on going all the way down with your single crochets 
in every single stitch. And when you're working your single crochet rows, this is a really good time for you to go ahead and check your stitch count, right? Because doing these single crochets really doesn't take too much thought. So you could be counting your stitches every single crochet row and that'll keep you on track. So you'll know um, if you picked up an extra stitch or if you dropped one. And at least it's not like if it's ever happened to you where you're like halfway through a project and then you realize, oh my gosh, it's looking lopsided or whatever. And then you got to pull out so many rows or so many rounds. It's really disappointing when that happens. But this way, you know, only two rows away. It's not a big deal. Okay. So now that you're down to the end there of that single crochet row, you're going to chain two and turn your work. So now when we're going into another Alpine stitch row here, and you're going to notice your work might curl a little bit. That's okay. Don't worry. It will flatten it out. It'll be fine. Um, don't let that get you. It's okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to let you go to it. Just take note of a couple things here quickly before I let you go and, um, and work away on this. I want to point out something very important with this stitch. So you're going to continue on. We've just done our single crochet row. Now you're going to do your Alpine stitch row the same way we did. But remember when we did our first one here, we started with a front post double crochet. You want to make sure that all of your front post double crochets that you're about to work fall in between the previous front post double crochets. That's how you get that really pretty texture. So because this is already a front post double crochet, we are going to actually start with a regular double crochet. And then we're going to go down and do a front post double crochet in here. That way it's falling in between then a regular one here and a front post down here. I'm going to do a few more just so that you can see before I let you go to it. Oops. It's getting a little more yarn there. Okay. So you see what I mean there? How it's falling in between. So these front post double crochets I'm working on are falling in between the previous ones that I did. So that's something you want to pay careful attention to when you're starting your Alpine stitch rows. So you're just going to go ahead and now you're going to work an Alpine stitch row. You're going to, um, when you get to the end, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Then you're going to just do all single crochets, then your Alpine stitch, then all single crochets. Okay. And you're going to do that for either 24 rows in total and to little tip to make it easier for you to count. If you would just count, um, your front post double crochets, you should have 12 rows of front post double crochet, right? Cause to get one of these rows, you needed to work two. Um, so when I'm saying 24 rows, I mean, in total, that's including your double crochet rows and your single crochet rows. Okay. That's really important that you take note of that. Otherwise you're going to end up with this incredibly long hat. <laughs> so 24 rows in total or 12 of these rows, your little front post rows. Um, or that's if you're working on a toddler or a child size. So it's, it's the same amount, the same height for both of those sizes. Um, otherwise you're just going to work to the measurement of the hat height that you need, which you can refer to the size chart if it's anything other than a child or toddler size. So go ahead and continue on with this two row repeat pattern. Um, if you're stuck at all, or you need a little bit more help with these stitches, just rewind, um, go back in this video and watch it again, um, and go over it. That's the beauty of these tutorials. You can watch it again and again until you get the hang of it. Um, but when you finish, when you reach the height of the hat that you need, then come back and I will show you what to do next. Okay, so now that you have finished your rows there for your hat height, we are going to move on to the next step now. So at the end of this, you should have just finished your last double crochet row, your alpine stitch row. You're going to chain one and turn your work. And now you're going to work one single crochet in every stitch all the way down. When you get to the end, you're going to chain one and turn your work. 
you're going to do that for a total of three rows. Okay, so go ahead and work one single crochet in every single stitch down, chain one, turn your work, do that for three rows in total, and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished those single crochets, you're gonna chain one, and with your work inside out, so this is the nice side that will be the outside of our hat, and this is the inside of our hat. You're gonna fold your work in half, so it's inside out. Don't worry about all my little tail ends, and if you have them too, oh, sorry, I keep on hitting the camera and shaking it, sorry. Um, don't worry about that, we're gonna hide those at the end. So you should see when I do like the multicolor ones, I have a million tails hanging out all over the place. Don't worry about that, we'll deal with that at the end. <clears throat> okay, so line it up, making sure that it's even, which to be honest, this is like my least favorite part of making hats <laughs> this way. Okay, so line them up and we're gonna close this seam. So just so you know, we worked up to the brim of our hat. This is going to be the part that goes around like your head. That's the brim of the hat. Um, and the reason why I do it that way, I know it's a little odd compared to a lot of other patterns. Usually you see it the other way around where you'd be doing decrease rows and all that. We're going to go and get to that up here because I don't like it when my starting chain is at the brim of the hat because I find it's too restricting. It's very, um, I like a little bit of that stretchy feel, that really soft cushy feel. So that's why I do it that way. So this is gonna end up being the top of our hat that we're gonna close up um, now in a minute. So I'm just trying to get a good angle here for you guys. We are going to do slip stitches. So what you're gonna do is, can you see that okay? Let me just fix myself up here. Um, we're gonna close this like a seam all the way down using slip stitches, okay? So go ahead and just push your hook through that first little it's also awkward because we're working down the side of our work. We're not working in actual stitches, so it's not the best, but whatever. Just make sure that you have it lined up, your front and back evenly, sorry, both sides evenly, it's not even front and back, but you know what I mean, both edges. Um, have them lined up evenly, and we're gonna slip stitch. You're just gonna yarn over your hook and pull it right through. Oh, hang on make that a little bit sorry about that you'd think i would edit that out but i'm just gonna keep on going so let's try that again make sure you push it through both sides yarn over and pull right through it's such an awkward there we go starting it off is so awkward um and we're just going to go ahead and as evenly as possible going down we're going to close our seam doing slip stitches all the way down. So go ahead and work your slip stitches all the way down until you get to the end and then come back. Okay, so now that you've closed up that seam and you're at the end here, you're gonna chain one. And now, let me just get a little bit of a better angle here for you. Now going all the way around, so here's our starting chain, okay? So what we're gonna do is just go all the way around doing regular single crochets. So you're just gonna go right in and use, you're working basically on the other side of that starting chain that you began your work on. So just go ahead and do a regular single crochet all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now that you're back to the start here, you're gonna find your little chain one that you started this round with and close this round with a slip stitch in that chain one, okay? We're gonna chain one again, and now we're gonna begin our decrease round. Get my hair in here. So we're gonna do two single crochet decreases. So let's do one right now, okay? You're gonna put your hook through your stitch Yarn over, pull up a loop, go right into the next stitch there. Okay, so we just worked in that stitch. We're gonna go over here, push your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop. You've now got three loops on your hook and we're working in two different stitches here. So we're gonna take these two stitches and we're gonna turn them into one. We're just gonna yarn over and pull through all our loops. 
So see that? These, sorry, these two stitches have now become this one stitch. So that's a single crochet decrease. We're gonna do another one here. So push your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, put your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So that's two single crochet decreases. And now we're gonna do two regular single crochets. We're going to do two single crochet decreases. And then two regular single crochets. So you're just gonna go ahead and repeat this all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now that you've done that all the way around, you're gonna find your little chain one space you started the round with, close with a slip stitch, chain one. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and again, repeat that last round that we just did. So we're gonna do single crochet decrease, single crochet decrease again. Get some more yarn here. And then two regular single crochets. Okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and continue on working your two single crochet decreases. Oh, yeah, no, that's right, sorry two single crochet decreases, and then two regular single crochets. Two single crochet decreases, two regular single crochets. And you're just gonna go ahead and keep on working that all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now that you've finished that second decrease round, you're gonna go ahead, find your chain one that you started the round with, close with a slip stitch, and then chain one. Now we're gonna go ahead and just work our regular single crochet stitches all the way around. So just one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around and then come back. Okay, so when you get back to the beginning here, you're gonna go ahead and close with a slip stitch and we're gonna fasten it off but with a really long tail and I'll show you why. So go ahead and just pull a good amount through. So I do about this long through. And just get your scissors and fasten it off. Okay, pull that through. Now what we're gonna do is I like to go around and in every third stitch, so one, two, three, you just push your hook through the stitch and we're gonna pull the tail in and out. So that now we're gonna go one, two, three, and then from the inside. So it's like we're weaving it in and out in every third stitch all the way around. So where is that one going? So one, two, three. the third okay because like I mentioned this is the top of our hat so we're weaving this tail end in and out every few stitches because we're going to pull the top of this hat closed. And we're gonna pull this tail end like a drawstring. And it's just gonna cinch it right closed there on top. So I think we're, is this back at the beginning now? Yep, yeah, we're at the seam here. Okay, so now that you've weaved it in and out all the way around, you're just gonna make sure that the top of the hat is all facing the right way, and just close it up, okay? And then you can use a yarn needle or your hook. I'm just gonna use my hook for right now, and so I'm just gonna kind of just, no rhyme or reason, but I just wanna go across and pull this through, 
just to sort of secure it a little extra there. And then just go under the middle. Oops, just the piece that we just pulled, just to kind of tie it. Hold it in place there, okay? Because now we're gonna attach our pom-pom and I use the same, the same tail end. So get your hook and push it into the middle from the inside there, okay? And pull that right through the center and flip your hat. I'll give you a little bit of a better angle there. Okay, flip your hat the right way now. You can get a good look at it there. You can pull it to close that hole. It might come open and loose. We're gonna secure it um, after we attach the pom-pom. We'll get it better secured and fasten all the tail ends and do all that. So now you can see your hat is looking so beautiful and you can add more of a brim if you'd like to. Um, but now we're gonna attach the pom-pom. Okay, so here's the pom-pom that I'm using. Um, you can probably find lots of different kinds of pom-poms at your local craft store. Uh, but I have included a link in the description below if you wanted to order the same ones that I use. I really like them because they have the little loop and I just find it so much easier to work with. So you can attach your pom-pom however you want to, but I'll show you how I do mine with these ones that have the little loop attached to it. So I just push my hook right through, grab that yarn and just pull it right through. Okay, and I do it a couple times just to make sure that it's not, you know, a super skinny, just like one little piece of yarn <laughs> holding it on there. Cause you know, kids, it's not like they're going to be super delicate with it, nor should they have to, it should be secure. Okay. So you're going to take your hook and go ahead up into your hat. It's a little tricky. It's a little awkward. So I apologize. This is not seeming like, you know, a super seamless video moment here, <laughs> but it is an awkward thing. It's an awkward step. And you're just going to use your hook. I'm just using my hook there. Hope you can see it. Okay. And I'm just going to pull that tail end back inside. And you can see that it's, it's on there pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I'm going to flip my hat back inside out so that I can work on securing this. Okay, so now I might just go and take my yarn needle. I don't want it to have this weird pook. I would like to tie it to this, but because this is so off to the side, it's off center, I don't want to pull that and it has this weird pook on the hat. And I have to hide this tail end anyway. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hide this tail end up to the middle so I can use it to tie off that pom-pom tail end. So I'm just using my yarn needle here. And this is what you're going to do with all the tail ends. So... All you're going to do is just weave the tail end in and out of stitches on the inside of your hat. No rhyme or reason, just makes it nice and secure. Where's, where am I heading here? Okay, it's just going to go, oh, looks like I've literally got like a piece of hair stuck in there. Right up in there to the middle. That's where I'm going because I'm just going to tie this together just to really secure that pom-pom on nice and tight there. And remember that this is what we used for that little drawstring to close the top. So it's kind of serving two purposes by really securing that good. And I'm going to go ahead and fasten this off now. I don't need such a long tail end anymore. And I will use my 
yarn needle to go ahead and just hide all of my tail ends all the way around on the inside of my hat. Thank you. 